Good evening and welcome to our first story. Tonight's story is the Mausel Cat and it'll probably last us a few nights. Mausel is a place in Cornwall which you might have written about and it's a lovely harbour village which has amazing Christmas lights. Maybe you could Google and find out about the lights and the history and write a report on it for us. So, the story, the Mausel Cat. At the far end of England, a land of rocks and moorlands stretches itself out into a blue-green sea. Between its high headlands lie tiny sheltering harbours where the fishing boats hide where, when the winter storms are blowing. One of these harbours is so small and the entrance between its great stone breakwaters is so narrow that fishermen call it the mouse hole. The people who live in the cottages around the harbour grew fond of the name and they call their village Mausel to this day. They say it in the Cornish way, Mausel, but you may say it as you choose. Once there lived in the village a cat whose name was Mauser. She had an old cottage with a window overlooking the harbour, an old rocking chair with patchwork cushions and an old fisherman named Tom. Mauser had had many kittens in her time, but they'd all grown up and left home. Her eldest son kept the inn on the quayside. It was noisy and smoky, and his man had once spilled beer on Mauser's head as he was drawing a pint, so she did not go there very often. One of her daughters kept the shop on the corner. It was busy and crowded, and her lady had once stepped on Mauser's tail as she was weighing out some vegetables, so she didn't go there often either. Sometimes Mauser felt that her children had not trained their people properly. Her own pet, Old Tom, was very well behaved. He never spilled the cream when he was filling her saucer. He always soaked the range to a beautiful golden glow. He rocked the rocking chair at just the right speed. He knew the exact spot behind her left ear where Mauser liked to be tickled. What was more, he never wasted his time drawing pints of beer or weighing out vegetables. When he wasn't looking after Mauser, he passed the day in the most useful way possible. He took his little boat through the narrow opening between the great breakwaters out into the blue-green sea and caught fish for Mauser's dinner. Ooh, can't the page. Out into the blue-green sea and caught fish for Mauser's dinner. Mauser was very partial to a plate of fresh fish. In fact, she never ate anything else. But she liked a little variety. So on Mondays they made morgy broth, Mauser's favourite fish stew. On Tuesdays they baked cake and topped it with golden mashed potatoes. On Wednesday they cooked kedgeree with delicious smoked ling. On Thursday they grilled fair maids a mouth-watering meal. On Fridays they fried lances with a knob of butter and a squeeze of lemon. On Saturdays they south scad with vinegar and onions. And on Sundays, they made star gazy pie with prime pilchards in pastry. All in all, Mouse's days passed very pleasantly. Then one year, there came a terrible winter. At the far end of England, the blue-green sea turned grey and black. The great storm cat is stirring, thought Mouse as she watched at her windows. The wind whined like a wild thing above the high headlands. It came hunting the fishing boats in their hidden harbours. When the great storm cat is howling, thought Mauser, it is best to stay snug indoors by a friendly fire. The sea drew itself up into giant waves and flung itself against the great breakwaters. All along the coast of Cornwall, the stone walls stood the shock. Then the sea sucked up its strength again and roared right over them, sinking the sailing boats in their home havens, but it could not get into the mouse hole. Mauser watched as the great storm cat clawed with his giant cat's paw through the cap gap in the harbour wall, but it was too small. He snarled and leapt up at the great breakwater under the lowering sky, but it was too high. The fishing boats sat safe as mice in their own mouse hole, but they could not get out. So what do you think is going to happen next? What's going to happen in the storm? Maybe you could write a description of the storm, imagining you're the cat looking out at the great storm. How would you feel if you were a fisherman out at sea? Maybe you could draw a picture of the storm and send a picture of it into our school website. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll be back tomorrow with another instalment. Sleep well, stay safe and see you soon. Bye!